Hi there, my name is Hisham Murad, and today I'd like to spend a couple of minutes with you discussing Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes and how it integrates with the Ansible Automation Platform. Let's get started. Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes integrates with one or more Ansible Automation Platforms. You simply add the credentials into your Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management configuration. This allows you to run a number of different job templates that you can execute on any third party or integrated systems through this integration with the Ansible Automation Platform. Now, what does this mean from an ACM perspective, from an advanced cluster management perspective? This means that during the cluster lifecycle activities, you can trigger Ansible Automation job templates to kick off, as well as through the policy-based governance engine, you're able to also execute different Ansible jobs in addition to the application lifecycle. So when managing applications, you're able to do this. Let's provide a little more details on each of these three different use cases. While creating OpenShift clusters, one of the things that you can do is before or after the cluster creation, you can trigger a number of different Ansible job templates to trigger. And you can see here in the top right, you can go in and configure those pre-installed Ansible job templates and the post-installed job templates. And you simply specify the template that you want to execute during the OpenShift cluster creation. This is something that we can also do during the upgrade process. So during an upgrade of an existing OpenShift cluster, you can also define the Ansible job templates that you want to trigger prior and or after the upgrade process. One of the things that you can also do through the governance risk and compliance, this is the Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management policy engine where we perform governance risk and compliance type activities, you're now able to trigger Ansible job templates as well on a violation. So when a policy violation is detected, you can trigger a Ansible job template as well. How do you configure that? You simply go to this automation column that you see here and you simply click on configure and choose the Ansible job template that you want to trigger. When it comes to the application lifecycle, anytime you are creating an application or updating an application, you can have also an Ansible job template trigger before and or after the creation of that application. As you can see here in the image to the right, you can see that an Ansible job triggered prior and after the creation of this application. Now let's spend a couple of minutes and go through this in a demonstration. So here we are in the Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes console. The first step in turning this integration on is simply going to the Credentials menu option on the left and simply adding the credentials for my Ansible environment or environments. Here you can see I have two different Ansible environments added. This is as simple as clicking on Add Credentials and then selecting Ansible Automation Platform. Now that I've done this, I'm now able to take advantage of this, these Ansible environments in the different activities that I perform. So here, going back to clusters, if I perform a create a cluster action in one of the steps, I can turn on automation. So if I skip really quickly to that step, I can now select a job template which will execute one or more jobs as part of that. How do I create these templates here? It's a matter of selecting this automation menu option and then creating the Ansible template. And you can see here I have two templates um, and each having two job templates as part of them. So now on a cluster creation and or a cluster upgrade, these job templates will trigger. Let's go to the governance risk and compliance use case. When performing a policy based governance and compliance against your environment, if we detect a violation, we can trigger an Ansible job template as noted earlier. How do you configure this? It's really a matter of simply clicking on configure 
selecting the Ansible credentials that you have defined, and then simply selecting the job template that you want to trigger upon a violation. You can have, you can run this manually, you can have this run once, and you can have this disabled as well. Now here's an example of where I have this already configured. And if I go and take a look at the history tab, you'll notice that this ran just a few minutes ago. And I can go in and see what Ansible Tower URL or this or system this ran on, and I can view the job as well. Lastly, let's take a look at the application lifecycle and how the Ansible automation platform integrates here. Let me very quickly create an application. I'm going to create an application. I'm going to call it book import. The namespace is also book import. I'm going to deploy this from my Git repository. The branch I am going to leverage is called prehook. I'm going to expand the configure automation for prehook and posthook. I am simply going to choose which Ansible environment I'm going to leverage for this. And I want this to deploy to my development environment. So I'll just add the label and click on save. After waiting a few moments for this application deploy to complete, we'll notice here that we had a prehook which triggered an Ansible job template that tr also triggered a ServiceNow ticket creation for us before this application got successfully deployed. Let's really quickly discuss resources and next steps. To learn more about Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management and its integration with Ansible, please visit the link I've highlighted here. If you'd like to try Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management, please visit the link that I have highlighted here in the middle as well. And if you'd like to request a demonstration from a Red Hat associate, please visit the link at the bottom of this page. Thank you very much and have a great day.